Sunrise Elementary School five years ago got a brand new cooling tower system that feeds all the air conditioning on the campus. What we are doing this summer is we are literally going to every single building on campus and removing those cooling units and installing brand new ones. All the piping is, is having to be redone above the ceilings in the classroom buildings as well as underground. It's over a two million dollar project. Uh, usually it would take three months to do that work. We're doing it in less than two months because of the tight time frame of summer. It's typical and commonplace for us to face a situation where we don't have quite the time we would hope to have, and, uh, but certainly that's all we've got. And what makes it even more critical is when you have a complex project where you're doing what we're doing here at Wyomena Park Elementary School. You're demolishing part of a campus and putting back something brand new. So not only do you have to have the rubble cleared away, you've got to have whatever facility you're constructing back into place and completely operational for the students when they arrive. In this case, we're having to demolish an existing parking lot, construct a brand new one, and while we're at it, clean up the parking lot so we can get ready for two new buildings that are gonna be coming online at the tail end of the next school year. We broke this project into two phases. The, the gist of the scope of work is tear out and construct a brand new parking lot which is bigger, safer, and offers more opportunity for car rider drop off and pickup. Second phase is to construct two new buildings, art, music, science lab, computer lab, and then eight classrooms uh, independent of, of the other building. But in order to do that, we've had to demolish the area where the parking was in order to put the buildings. As you can see, we're not done with putting it back to normal. And while we're at it, construct a brand new parking lot in the northern end. Most principals that have never been through any sort of a renovation really don't know what to expect. Uh, the thought process usually is you'll see a crew out, you'll see a couple pieces of equipment, there might be a load of dirt or two, and magically things go back to normal within a matter of weeks. The reality is things look like a uh, a war zone or a, a construction zone for much longer than most people anticipate. The immediate concern of your principal is you come out and you see rubble and dirt and pipes and folks working on building ramps and you wonder how long it might take to get done. We have yet to have a situation, knock on wood, where we have not been able to open up a school as planned. I don't anticipate that here, but certainly to the naked eye, it does look a little bit uh, troublesome for a principal. It is very scary because I know the amount of work they have left to do and what do we have, two weeks, three weeks until our teachers come back. So I'm concerned about getting them in their portable also concerned about getting 300 children placed in comfortable classrooms with technology, electric, and with furniture that's in place and materials. Pretty much it's business as usual for us. Anybody driving by the site would wonder how in the world it would get done. Uh, for us, it's simply the norm. Uh, do a lot in a little time frame with as least amount of money as we have. Uh, but knock on wood, as I said earlier, we've always been able to pull it together and we're pretty confident that when the kids come back, they won't know what pain went into it, but they'll be much better off. Annually, June 14th is recognized as Flag Day. In keeping with the tradition started by Bernard Sagran in 1885, Marion County Public School students wrote essays proclaiming what the flag means to them. Marion County is very fortunate where we have over 45,000 veterans that live in Marion County and they're very supportive of our school system and of us having patriotism in our schools. So what we actually do through our partnership with the Marion County Veterans Council and my office is we look at different ways we can bring patriotism to the classroom. And you know to take advantage of their military experiences it's bringing history to life. It's more exciting for a student to hear what somebody did when they were in the Pacific or or in Europe versus just reading it in the paper. And what we do is the veterans actually go to the schools, talk to the students about flag etiquette, what the 13 folds mean, a little bit about their military history, and then we ask the students to write an essay on what the flag means to them. Then what happens is a council of veterans get together as a committee, they review all the essays and they select the ones that they feel are the best, and we invite the students to our Flag Day program, which includes a flag retirement and the students reading their essays. The students who are fourth and fifth graders come out to the park and they get to read their essays in front of everybody. Some of them are very nervous and they just talk so fast you can hardly understand their essays. And some of them stand out to me as just so incredible and passionate about what they wrote and they did such a good job in presenting them that I was able to select a couple that are going to share their stories with you. The first thing that the flag means to me is its history. Let me explain. I read in 17, 1776, Betsy Ross made the first official American flag. 
but the original flag had only 13 stars. That was because there was only 13 original colonies. But as of today, there are 50 stars representing our 50 states. Me and the flag even share a birthday, June 14th. The colors and designs are the second thing that the flag means to me. The color red, valor, why, purity, and blue, loyalty. All of these colors remind me of the freedom, loyalty, liberty, and peace. Our flag is very special to me because of these colors. The third and final thing that the flag means to me is all of the soldiers who fought for our freedom and country. For instance, when I look at our flag, it reminds me of all our soldiers who fought for freedom, rights, liberty, and our country. I am glad and proud that our flag can represent that. In conclusion, what the flag means to me is something words cannot describe. The flag is an honor to have for it, to, and for it to represent our country is truly amazing, but what does the flag mean to you? What the flag means to me is freedom. Freedom is no more slavery for African American people, no more wars, battles, fights, and duels against the North or any other places in the country we live in. The meaning of no more is should likely never happen again. The flag also means to me is finished. What I mean by finished is over. We are finished with the wars against each other, all slavery and harmful things like that. Our country has came a very long way. Where we started, we finished. If we do get into war again, we will probably work hard and finish successfully. The flag is an amazing flag and will always be that way. For many of our kids, when they're out of school for an extended period of time, there's a lot of regression and it takes a lot of time to recoup those skills. So truthfully, extended school year is a qualification process and we monitor students based on like the holiday break to see whether or not students regress during that time to determine eligibility for extended school year over the summer. We want to continue to see their progress throughout the year and during any time off of school, there tends to be a little bit of regression with these select students. So we monitor that closely, not just in the areas of academics, but also the social emotional piece and the communication piece. We even have times when we have qualified a student for emerging skills, like the skill is just starting towards the end of the year. Well, the end of the year would be a big gap between the start of the school year, so we want to see those skills continue, and that's why they'll qualify also for extended school year. These students were identified as having a summer slide, so if they weren't in school during the summer, they would regress. So the last thing we want them to do is regress, so we have them here a couple days a week, and they're working working on academic skills, behavior skills, social emotional um, behavior type skills. They also work on their communication skills, working in small groups and um, learning how to get along with other kids. For one um, example, we have a fifth grade student here who is heading into middle school who is not communicating effectively in writing or reading and also speaking. So we have him working on a program called Fast Forward, which is a processing program that helps him develop those skills. So without this opportunity this summer, he would regress in those areas as opposed to making progress in those areas. We want the teachers and staff, when they start school in August, to be able to start from where they left off back in June. So these students are here for that reason. We are running from June 5th through July 19th, so it's pretty much the whole summer which is really good for the consistency for these kids. When they're not in a routine, they get frustrated. So we don't want them frustrated for two months and then coming back in August and having to start all over again. ESY at Hillcrest includes something unique. It's something you would expect to see during summer break, just not at a school. Kids splashing in a swimming pool. It is actually very unique. Um, I had to get approval from um, Elizabeth Fields to get the okay to hire a teacher for the pool. And when I explained the need, um, it was very clear that this district is really pro-choice for kids and whatever we need is what they're going to provide. And that was totally a need. And she said, absolutely, if that's what these kids need, let's make it happen. We definitely use it for extended school year to continue to provide provide social emotional, independent functioning and communication goals. That's all part of a child's IEP and we tie it into all aspects of our campus, including our swimming pool. It incorporates all of the child, not just pieces of it, but the whole child. And the children absolutely love it, enjoy it, and they're learning skills while they're in it. For an autistic child that doesn't interact with other students, this gives them the opportunity to learn to interact with other students. For a child that doesn't tend to communicate, you have to have some communication skills to be in the water, especially for safety issues. So they have to learn to communicate. It brings in other aspects of their lives that you wouldn't think that you take for granted until you provide the opportunity. The Public Education Foundation is hosting the 5th Annual Teacher Resource Fair on August 1st. Due to tremendous turnout the last couple of years, we have four one-hour blocks scheduled. 
for returning teachers or splitting you up by age and alphabet. Elementary schools A through L, that's Anthony to Legacy, at 9.30 a.m. M to Z, Madison Street to Wyomena Park at 10.30. Then returning secondary teachers at 12.30. New teachers get their own hour at 2.30. And don't worry that the shelves will be empty by the time you get your turn. We'll be busy restocking in between sessions. This is your chance to stock up on free supplies before the start of the school year, as well as visit with vendors who can help you meet your needs both inside and outside of the classroom. That's the Public Education Foundation's fifth annual Teacher Resource Fair on August 1st.